G'day, I'm uh, John ZK4 Bravo Zulu and I'm one of those mad keen, ha keen uh, ham radio operators who likes to take their uh, radio equipment up to the top of mountains and uh, operate from there. Now today I'm going to do a very short uh, video for you on the different types of antenna systems that we actually use. Now keeping in mind if we want to lug uh, our equipment up a hill generally that's using Shanks' pony so we pack on the back and walk up. Some guys like to take their cars as far up as they can and then hop out of the car and walk a bit. But for most of us, we need to have uh, an operating system that is, uh, is, is very portable. So a couple of considerations here when we're looking at antennas. Firstly, um, is their portability. So they have to be light um, and portable, easy to set up, easy to pull down. So that's really important. The other thing is functionality. Um, you don't want to be planning to work on, say, the 40 metre band. Get up there and 40 is absolutely dead and you're stuck because you brought a mono uh, band antenna. So the antenna also has to be multi-band functional as well. So today I've got about four or five different antennas to show you that are all multi-band, all really light and do a fantastic job. Might inspire you to go and grab your radio and an antenna and walk up the hill as well. Okay, the first one we might want to use is one we've probably all used for portable operation before, which is just a simple bit of wire. Now, for those who know me, my current radio is the Alicraft uh, KX3, and it makes it very, very easy to take um, doing soda as well, because it's got the antenna tuner and everything else built in. So if you're using that very simple piece of wire, it's just a matter of getting the handy little attachment that uh, Alicraft give you, and that uh, just clips onto the side. Um, you put uh, one side as the, um, as the wire, which you put up in a tree as high as you can or up on your squid pole, whatever you've got. And the other bit just simply goes to um, a grounding stake. And uh, push the tune button on the uh, KX3 and voila, off you go, you're on the air. Now look, it's not the most efficient, but if you want a quick and dirty system that will get you on the air really easily, that's the way to do it. And if you're using other sorts of antennas, like your FT or other rigs like your FT817, there are the antenna tuners that come with those as well. And again, it's the same sort of principle, um, only it's not as compact of course as the KX3 does. Very, very simple, very easy, multi-band and light. Now when it comes to antennas, I've got to admit to being a bit of a purist. I actually like something that's resonant and tuned up really well. So the antenna behind me actually is a uh, multi-band uh, clippable dipole. Really simple. Uh, as you can see, I've got my squid pole here and the antenna is actually clipped to the, is actually sitting on that part there with a bit of wire. Coax runs down to the rig and uh, then there are two, obviously being a dipole, two sides. Now how do I make that multi-band? Well, it's quite easy. What I have here is the clip. That's, um, I'll get the ant off there. That's just a bit of perspex and inside that, on, on that I've got a um, just a simple clip which I can unclip like that and then reclip when I want to change bands. Now obviously it's a little bit time consuming because you've got to raise and lower the antenna but this one works perfectly. I've got it tuned for 10 meters, uh, 20 meters and 40 meters and getting it up it's really easy. Once I've got it there on the squid pole it's just a matter of raising it up. And there it's gone right up. Again, I would secure, again, I would secure both sides of it down there. Uh, it can go up into trees, you can raise this, throw this up into a tree somewhere. Or um, what I often do is I just use it as an inverted V. So I've got uh, both ends uh, clamped down and tied down with um, Oki straps. And uh, so it's flexible straps, we call them Oki straps in Australia. And then stake down to the ground. And uh, again, instant inverted V. Uh, this is a seven meter squid pole. And uh, if you can get one of the 10 meter ones, which will help with another one of my antennas I'm going to show you in a second but it works really really well and again if you're in a situation where you've got um, no trees the squid pole does it for you now the other thing I've got of course I've got I carry a little um, uh, star picket about that long which I drive into the ground and then have some u-bolts on the bottom of this and that then holds the whole thing in place so it's quite robust and quite rigid and does the job for me now those of you who saw my um video on my first SOTA activation saw how that multi-band dipole actually um, failed for me. Uh, the antenna itself worked but uh, a dodgy old solder joint was what gave it up for me so that necessitated a run back down the hill and so I, what, I, what I ended up defaulting to was an old favourite. This here uh, again using my squid pole 
I've simply turned it into, um, using this little box, a uh, quarter wave ground plane. Uh, we all know about quarter wave ground planes, they radiate equally badly in all directions and so it's an ideal antenna for using for SOTA. Now once you, this is a 7 metre squid pole but imagine if I did have, finally have my 10 metre one. Um, then I've got a 10 metre vertical and um, I've only got uh, two um, radials on here but I actually have four that I can put on there and then uh, set it up and there is a perfectly functional uh, 40 metre ground plane. And again of course using the antenna tuner um, I can load it up on, uh, on 20 metres or whatever else but it works perfectly on 40 which is where we do a lot of our soda um, activation um, activations on that frequency so it works really really well so uh, that's another antenna and again it just relies on the same sort of configuration with the squid pole uh, staking it to the ground I've got uh, U-bolts there to do that and then it all works in together so that's another antenna that's light portable and does the job for you Okay, um, I think I've lost count of how many antennas this one is. It must be about number three or four or something like that. But this one, a um, very, very simple one. It's a, um, uh, a multi-band um, dipole, but it's off-centre fed, and so essentially I think it functions like uh, an in-fed long wire when you use it. So again, as you can see, incredibly portable. Now, built into the, uh, to the plastic framework here uh, is a ballon. So it's, uh, it's completely, it uh, balances for you so you can plug in your coax um, you know, unbalance to balance and off we go from there. Now, uh, it has two bits of wire to it. One of those is this bit here. Now that's all mill spec. Um, and so it's actually, uh, it's like a cloth but there is a copper wire woven into it. Now again, as you can see, uh, alligator clip. So this end here, uh, the lower end, uh, will clip to um, a grounding stake. Um, which can just be, uh, you know, if you haven't got your prop, haven't taken a big copper grounding stake with you, you could quite easily use uh, a tent peg. A, a long tent peg admittedly. Now the other end of course uh, comes off this side and uh, unwraps and again comes off there, it's even got a um, uh, an uh, egg insulator on there and again that can be put, you can use your squid pole to put it up there or again swing it up in a tree and uh, this thing I, this thing works very very well. Okay to be honest I haven't used it but the bloke who I bought it from again commercially made job um, sings its praises and how well it works and has worked all over the world for him in various locations when he's been portable. So that's another really, really simple, as you see, incredibly lightweight and uh, multi-band, so it does the job. The last antenna I'm going to show you um, is this one. Uh, it's called the Alex Loop Antenna. Now again, you can um, get on uh, YouTube videos, uh, Alex, the maker of this, and his call sign is uh, PY1 Alpha Hotel Delta. You can get on to YouTube and look at a whole lot of his promotional material, but this is one that I have used. Uh, again, used it in my uh, in my most recent uh, soda activation, and uh, as you can see, um, it comes in this nice, this nice, neat little bag. Um, it's a multi-band antenna, and uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about it when I've got it set up, and you'll be surprised. Uh, firstly, at how it sets up, what it does, and then uh, at its performance as well. Rightio, yeah, this is it. This is the um, Alex Loop antenna. Uh, again, it's a magnetic uh, loop, and uh, so it can be this size and function really, really well. Uh, this antenna runs from um, 7 megahertz up to around 30 megahertz. Uh, because of the size of the capacitor in here, or for the tuning, it's restricted to 20 watts output. But I tell you what, it's a, it's a very, very effective and efficient antenna. So again, uh, construction is very simple, um, and the tuner is, uh, I don't know if you can see that from the video, but then the bottom here is a little tuning stick, and that's what it gets tuned on. Now, um, I've actually got it standing on um, this, which is a uh, uh, just a light stand that I've got uh, from uh, from Bunnings, believe it or not, cost me about 30 bucks, and uh, the antenna sits perfectly on that, and that weighs a little bit more when I go out um, out uh, field with it, but you know what can I do? <laughs> It works well. I could have that in my hand and just do this the whole time, but then it gets a, it gets a bit tiring. Now, when I use it with the KX3, again, it just plugs straight into the KX3. But what I have to, you have to remember to do is you have to actually uh, disable the auto tuner that's in the KX3. Now, if you're not using, if you're using an FT817, no tuner with it, no problems because um, this will try and tune in the loop and it won't do that successfully. So the only way it can be tuned in again is using uh, the tuning cap on the bottom. Now the only problem that I've found with that 
there's a bit of extra hand capacitance affects it so I want to modify that and actually put a longer stem on that so I'm nowhere near the antenna when I'm tuning it but yes it works I have as I said I did try it um, on my last SATA activation and it worked reasonably well um, not as good I don't think it's anywhere near as good as the dipole but very portable and um, again multi-band is what you want for an antenna so look that uh, really concludes uh, my talk about the uh, or my DVD about the various um, antenna systems that are available and there's a whole range more out there the key thing is um, if you can if it's portable and it's multi-band um, and you can get together with uh, a radio like your KX3 or your FT817 or the ICOM 703 um, there's a whole range of radios that can do it it's a very small battery system um, and you can get out there and you can start doing some summits on the air activating um, oh, exotic mountain locations and uh, have a lot of fun doing it I know I certainly do I'll see you next time on the airwaves or uh, again on uh, my next YouTube video cheers oh,